Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about rotation within the XY plane around the Z axis. So we have a plane and rotation is within the plane. This is XY plane, this is Z and it's all only uh, around the uh, initial position uh, and uh, around the z-axis as around the axis so everything is happening within the xy plane okay that's our uh, purpose of this lecture to analyze this particular uh, motion now, this lecture is part of the course Physics 14 presented on Unizor.com. I suggest you to watch the lecture from the website, uh, not only because it's free, and it is, and no advertisement. Uh, also, it contains detailed notes for each lecture, uh, and eventually it will contain exams for every section, so you can take it and uh, doesn't require any information from you, so just completely free. Now, rotation. We are talking about not just rotation, but about uniform rotation within the x, y, z around the origin of coordinate and around the um, z axis. So basically we are talking about a motion within the x, y, z, within the x, y, sorry, plane, which means z coordinate is always is equal to zero, right? So z is always equal to zero and obviously z of t is equal to zero and z speed and second derivative they're all equal to zero and i'm no longer going to mention z at all so all my coordinates are within the xy my vectors are within xy um, plane etc so now we have to define somehow the uniform rotation now before we, we defined what is a uniform motion as the motion along the straight line with a constant speed basically whenever you're covering the same distance in the same um, interval of time now let's define in a reasonable way um, the uniform rotation now I think it's very reasonable to define the uniform rotation when we are rotating by um, the same angle uh, for the same periods of time so let's say within the first five seconds of rotation you you turn by let's say 30 degrees then for any five seconds interval you have to rotate by the same 30 degrees so that's the uniform rotation now if now this is x, y, z, so uh, x, y um, plane. I'm no longer talking about the z, and I will put everything on this on this board as this is x, y plane. So rotation is here. So this is x, this is y, and what I'm saying is that this angle from positive direction of x to the vector to the point where my uh, object is located this is the function angle as the function of t of time and it's supposed to be such a su such a uh, function uh, which which basically delivers me exactly the same as my uh, speed delivered in case of uniform motion which means its derivative is supposed to be constant and I'm using omega as the constant which signifies basically let me just call it openly this is angular speed in the same way as we had the speed um, uh, as uh, basically the measure of how fast uh, the object moves along the straight line this is the measure how fast the angle is changing so the change of the angle uh, I I I the instantaneous basically speed of changing of the angle should be constant that what means um, that's what means the 
uniform rotation. Uniform rotation is the rotation described by such a function whose derivative by time is constant. End of story. That's the definition. From this, we obviously can derive, as before, how the angle actually is um, expressed as the function of time. Now, if its derivative is da uh, omega, then the function itself, uh, phi of t, should be omega t plus some kind of a constant, which is basically initial angle from which we started. But uh, we can always start the x axis um, in such a way that our initial position is on the x axis with coordinates r zero, right? X coordinate is radius and y coordinate is zero. In which case this disappears is equal to zero, initial position is equal to zero, phi of zero would be equal to zero, which is supposed to be this way. That's kind of easier. And so we have this particular um, equation for angle as the function of time is such and such, where omega is a constant. Well, okay, now we're talking about angle, but we need the coordinate expressed uh, equations of motion, or vector expressed, or something, not the angle. Well, that's very easy, because if I have this angle as a phi, my obviously x of t is equal to uh, r times cosine of omega t, cosine of phi, right? My x coordinate is cosine, r times cosine, it's a triangle, and my y coordinate is r sine of omega t. Where omega is constant, r is also given so that's how I got my equations of motion. Well, that's great. Um, however, I would like to spend some time to just analyze the uh, more physical properties of this type of motion. Now, knowing this, let's just think about the following. First of all, let's find the velocity, right? We have omega as angular velocity, and it's a constant. Now, how about velocity um, of the body of this object in coordinate form, the regular velocity which we used to? Now, the vector of velocity will change because direction is changing, right? Direction is not a straight line. So velocity, as we understand it, which is vector v which is equal to x of t y of t and the vector is also a function of t this velocity cannot be constant well let's calculate what it is oh i'm sorry it should be okay now it's equal to okay derivative from uh, cosine is minus sine and then there is an inner function w, so it would be minus r omega sine of omega t. That's my x coordinate, x velocity. And y velocity from sine is a cosine, also r omega cosine of omega t. So that's my vector of velocity. And as you see, it's changing with the time for obvious reason. Now, first of all, what's the speed, linear speed? Speed is a magnitude of the vector of velocity. Magnitude of this is, you remember, if you have a vector, uh, let's call it uh, PQ, then the magnitude of this vector is square root from P square plus Q square. Now, in this case, square root of this plus th square, square root of this square plus this square, you understand it would be r omega square and sine square, and this is the same thing, but the cosine square, sine square plus cosine is 1. So, basically, I will have um, omega square plus r omega uh, square. 
square times um, square times cosine square of omega t plus uh, sine square of omega t right so this is one and square root so I will have that the speed is equal to r omega now this is what is speed in this particular case well that's a linear speed as we are going along this circle how much of the lengths of the of, of the circle we are covering in the unit of time basically that's what speed is okay out of curiosity let's do the following now this is my position vector this is my speed my velocity sorry vector out of curiosity I would like to do this scalar product of my position times velocity what happens now the scalar product of two vectors with components x and y is you multiply x by x and y by y and sum them up right remember this if you have vector p1 q1 let's do it vertically p1 q1 this vector scalar product by p2 q2 it's p1 p2 plus q1 q2 that's the definition of the scalar product right and I will explain you why I need this as soon as I will do this multiplication so I have to multiply x by x and I will have minus r square omega sine of w of omega t cosine omega t plus y by y r by r r square omega again sine of omega t times cosine of omega t which is equal to zero right minus and plus everything else is the same now you have to remember again your vectors if scalar product of two vectors is equal to zero then they are perpendicular to each other we have proven this in the course when we were talking about vectors in the mathematics course which means what which means the position vector which is from zero to this point is always perpendicular to speed to to, ve to velocity vector which means velocity vector should be tangential to the circle so if we are rotating my velocity vector is always tangential to a uh, to a circle of uh, the trajectory and at any point it's perpendicular to position at that point so that's what's very interesting again velocity when you're uniformly rotating um, uh, the body around some uh, center in a circle will always be perpendicular to the radius vector into position of uh, our object at the time at any time doesn't depend on t for any t so at any time velocity at point wherever you are located is always perpendicular to the position vector now let's talk about the second derivative second derivative is acceleration okay acceleration vector what is it this is the derivative of this right so I have from sine is a cosine plus another omega boot from here so it's minus r omega square cosine omega t now this one from cosine is minus sine and it would be also omega square and sine
interesting compare this position and acceleration what's the difference only the difference is minus omega square multiplier so these two vectors are collinear and the only thing is we are multiplying by some negative factor now my vector of position goes, fr go goes from here to the point and my vector of acceleration at this point is collinear but with a minus sign and some multiplier so my acceleration goes towards the center of the rotation that's a very interesting fact right so acceleration goes exactly col collinear to my uh, vector of position from center to the point where object is located but directed towards the center in opposite direction of the obviously as if the center actually gravitates and obviously we all understand that for instance if earth is circulating around the sun it's the gravitation from the sun which keeps it and it's the gravitation which gives acceleration right so that's why we are at the same time accelerating toward the sun but we are our velocity is directed to ten tangential to our orbit right so these two movement make a, a, a circle acceleration towards the center and velocity perpendicular to my position tangential to a circle are two different movements the result of which is the rotation so you see we have a lot of mathematics but also there is very important physical interpretation of this and finally um, uh, let's do the uh, acceleration uh, magnitude we did the speed here it's the magnitude of this vector of velocity which was constant because it was sine square plus cosine square under the root here we'll have exactly the same thing uh, the magnitude of this vector is again square root of this square plus this square uh, and cosine square plus sine square would be the same would, would be equal to 1 and I will have r omega square as the magnitude of acceleration so acceleration is a vector which always directed from wherever our object is towards the center and it's always the same does not depend on time so these are physical properties which we have derived from mathematical analysis of this movement well that's it about rotation now you know all these details um, I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture on unisor.com um, and uh, well that's it for today thank you very much and good luck <laughs>